This physcast deals with rotational motion. We're asked to consider a merry-go-round which rotates from rest with an angular acceleration of 1.5 radians per second squared. What we want to find out is how long does it take to rotate through the first two revolutions and then for the next two revolutions. If I interpret this question, it's a rotation problem and importantly it's one where the angular acceleration is a constant. So alpha is equal to a constant. This means I can use my equations of motion for constant angular acceleration. I'm going to introduce these by remembering that there is an analog between linear motion and rotational motion. The linear quantities such as your displacement is equivalent to an angular displacement in rotation. Your linear velocity is equivalent to an angular velocity omega in rotational motion. Your acceleration is going to be equivalent to angular acceleration for your equations of motion. And time, of course, is still the same as time. So what we can do then is recall our linear equations of motion. And simply by making the substitutions for displacement, velocity, and acceleration with angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration, we can recast those equations so that they will describe our constant angular acceleration motion. So let's develop this a little bit further. What are we asked to find? Well, essentially, my merry-go-round is a rotating object. And so I might draw it like this. It rotates about some axis. We can say that the merry-go-round starts from rest. So our initial angular velocity is equal to zero. And let's take one point on the merry-go-round for reference, which I'll say is here. And the angular acceleration is constant, so that's going to be given by 1.5. That's alpha. And what we want to find out is the time it takes to, first of all, travel two revolutions. Remembering one revolution is one complete. This movement of the marker all the way around as one revolution. That's equal to an angular displacement, so theta minus theta naught, the the total amount of angle that's been traversed by the merry-go-round um, is equal to two uh, revolutions for uh, part A. Uh, um, this unit of revolutions is uh, not the natural unit for angular displacement. Uh, when we talk about angular displacement, we really want that to be in radians. So we need to do a unit conversion here, which will convert that angular displacement into radians, remembering that one revolution is equal to 360 degrees or that's equal to 2 pi radians. So two revolutions will be 4 pi radians. I want to solve for the uh, time. I know the angular displacement, the initial velocity, and the acceleration, so um, I could use uh, this. Uh, so if we take that equation there, theta minus theta naught is equal to omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared. I think about this, uh, my initial velocity is zero, so this term here is going to disappear. And I can just solve for the time now, uh, rearranging that equation. Um, I can multiply by two on both sides to get two times my angular displacement. Divide that by the angular acceleration alpha, and then take the square root, and that will tell me my time. Let's put some numbers in here. Uh, we've got t is equal to the square root of two times my angular displacement is going to be 4 pi, and my angular acceleration is 1.5, and we get that that time is 4.09 seconds. So that's how long it takes uh, the merry-go-round to rotate two revolutions uh, when starting from rest. Let me just do a little bit of assessment for part A here. Um, first of all, the angular displacement theta minus theta naught, I've got that as a positive quantity. What that means is that my final angular position um, is uh, increasing as my object r r rotates in a counterclockwise fashion. So I'm just saying that my angles, I've chosen my counterclockwise as being my positive angle of displacement. So um, if, uh, if that uh, angle of displacement was larger, it would take me a longer time to rotate um, more uh, revolutions. If my angular acceleration was larger, then it would take less time. So it seems to um, make sense. 
So let's look at part B now. We want to find the time it takes for the object to complete another two revolutions after already completing uh, two revolutions. So what I'll do is work out the time it takes to complete my um, a total of four revolutions. So that means it, I have to merry-go-round has to travel eight pi. So it's uh, four times around. So we can use this expression to do that because the initial angular velocity would still be zero if I look at the total displacement from when the object starts at rest. And then if I solve for that time, then I'll have to take off the 4.09 seconds, which is how long the object took to rotate uh, two revolutions. So once again, we use the same expression here. Now I'm going to have the square root of 2 times 8 pi divided by 1.5. And that time is 5.79 seconds. Now that's not the time for the next two revolutions. Once again, that's the time to uh, go around four times. So the answer for part B is really going to be um, that 5.79, the time to go around four times, minus uh, 4.09, the time to go around the initial two times, which gives me uh, 1.70 round up uh, seconds. My answer for part A is uh, 4.09 seconds. The answer for part B um, is uh, 1.70 seconds. The, the linear analogy of course would be if I'm a car accelerating from rest than it is, it takes me longer to travel the first 100 meters than it does to travel the second 100 meters.